get it down in your mind who is blessing you and he's blessing you when? That's right. This is a blessing that you don't have to wait for. Now, this is not over in the by and by. Amen. Over yonder. The Lord is blessing you right now. Amen. We are grateful to God this morning for his blessings. Amen. Blessings made possible to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In whom we receive all blessings. We just bless God again for all of you here today, our church members, our our friends and family, visitors who are here in town, we truly bless God for your presence today. I want to invite your attention. I'm going to have you go ahead on and turn to Paul's letter to the Church of Philippi, the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 5 through 10. Amen. And for those who may not have it, and you don't have to stand just yet, but I, I will let you know. Because I want to set the stage for what Paul shares with us in verses 5 through 10. And to make that picture complete in your mind, by way of introduction of Philippians, Paul writes a letter to his young charge named Timothy. And so in 1 Timothy, and you turn if you, you would like, uh, you don't have to, but in 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul helps us to understand Paul. He says, I want you to understand. So what Paul is saying in English, I haven't been saved all my life. Amen. I think we all can identify with that. Paul says, I have not been a believer in Jesus Christ all my life. So he's grateful to God through Jesus Christ. And he says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, he says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, mm -hmm. who have enabled me, for it was Jesus Christ who counted Paul faithful and put him in the ministry. Mm -hmm. But Paul says, who was? Paul says, but before God put me in ministry, understand that I was a blasphemer, I was a persecutor, yeah. and, and I was inju injurious. Yeah. And everybody here should be able to say amen to that. Yeah. Because what you are acknowledging is that you had another side to the cross. <laughs> we may be saved now, yeah. and we may wave a hand and bless the name of the Lord, yeah. but it has not always been that way. Yeah. Come on now. Amen. Be honest with you. Amen. I can't tell you how many resurrection Sundays I spent at home. Amen. 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 Yes, Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. For the sake of our visit, I made that statement many times. I didn't accept the Lord until I was 32. So I spent a whole lot of resurrection Sundays. Amen. Back then, that TV to change now. You know, they got everything now. But you, some shows you couldn't see as often. And so one of the shows that I really liked at that time on Sunday was Tarzan. <laughs> so I got up every Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> Me and Tarzan. Amen. But like Paul, I obtained mercy. God was merciful unto me. Meaning God did not meet out to me punishment. Amen. But I obtained God's mercy and like Paul, every Sunday, if you will, that I stayed home, I did it ignorantly. In other words, Jesus said it this way, they know not what they're doing. Amen. And so, when I thought I was doing myself a favor and criticizing y'all for going, amen, I criticize all you Bible thumpers every Sunday. But now I know I did it because I didn't know what I was doing. And God was merciful to me in my ignorance. And God didn't call me stupid. He said, Clyde doesn't know, and I won't hold it against him. You see, this, you see this great apostle who says, 
what he did. He said, I blaspheme and I persecute and I work all manner of harm against the church of Jesus Christ. And I did it because I didn't know what I was doing. Amen. Amen. Now you can turn to Philippians. That's the stage. Philippians chapter 3. And we'll pick up at verse 5. Paul said, you got to understand who I was before God enabled me Amen. and put me in the ministry. Not only was I this persecutor, not only was I this, 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 this harmful man, he said, but you got to understand my background. Paul said, I was circumcised the eighth day for the stock or tribe of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul was a Benjaminite. And they were known as the blue bloods of the Hebrews. Okay? What Paul is telling you is that as we count reputation among men, I was somebody. He said, touching the righteousness which is in the law, I was blameless. But what things were gained to me, all that Paul accomplished in his distinguished life, all that he was able to do academically and in terms of the religious community, I counted it lost for Christ. In other words, it didn't mean a thing to me. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things for lost. For what reason? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb or rubbish that I may win Christ. Amen. And be found in him, Jesus Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. For what reason? Why would Paul step back from this incredible resume of life accomplishments? For one reason and one reason only, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Amen. You may be seen. Paul was a man who spoke multiple languages. Paul was a man who had trained in the greatest of theological seminaries. Paul was a young man who was being trained and groomed by the greatest minds of that day to become the chief priest of the Sanhedrin Council. But yet, Paul said, I count everything I ever did in this life before coming to know Jesus Christ as a waste of my time. Did you hear that? Amen. And this is a man who had accomplished much historically. But yet, he came to a new understanding. He said, I want to spend every day of my life that I may know Jesus Christ and not just know Jesus, but that I may know the power of his resurrection. See, that's what these songs were about this morning. Knowing the power of his resurrection. Jesus did more than just get up from the dead. He did more than just roll a stone. Over. It was so much more than that. And Paul here, having, through his own zealousness, persecuting the church, and if you read in Acts chapter 8, verse Three, it says he wreaked havoc on the church. If Paul lived today, Paul would have come in here and would have dragged every one of us in chains to prison. That's the man that he was. The Bible says that Paul went house to house, door to door, and wherever he found somebody calling on the name of Jesus, you got a problem. Amen. You got a huge problem. Yeah. Paul was not beyond taking your life. Mm -hmm. He was a man. Look at this now. This is the great apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. 
The man that we credit with writing two thirds of the New Testament. We all talk much about his evangelism and his church planting, but this is a man that would have taken you out. Yes, and wouldn't have given you a second thought. Well, and he would have done it in the name of God. Amen. And he would have thanked God that he could haul you out of here because he believed that God had given him a charge. He believed that he had a divine revelation from God himself. That's why he said, touching the word of God, he was blameless. He said, because everything I ever did, I was motivated by God himself. Amen. And what an incredible man. Mm -hmm. But yet, he erred, as Jesus said, mm -hmm. because he didn't know the scripture. Mm -hmm. Paul was as wrong as two men shoot. Mm -hmm. For all that he did, for all he had accomplished, he was dead wrong, even though he thought he was right. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. See, sometimes we do things because we think they are right. Yes. But we can be dead wrong yes. in our opinion. And so something is happening here. Paul didn't realize that the law of Moses, all those laws that God wrote, that all of the 17 books of prophecy, all 150 songs, all testified of Jesus Christ. Amen. He didn't know that the book was about Jesus. Amen. That's why he said, I did it ignorantly. I didn't know. And now, a man who spent his entire life doing so much for what he thought was for God, he now comes to understand it was against God's will. Well, so what that says is there are things that we do, we think we're doing for Christ. Oh no, oh no. And this man now writes to us for our learning, for our understanding, to help our ignorance. Absolutely. Paul says, don't you understand that as a born again, baptized believer in Jesus Christ, your sole focus in life is to know him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Huh? Yeah. And he didn't just stop that. Well, he didn't say just know Jesus. Uh -huh. And that's why I want to labor this morning from verse 10. Because our sole focus as a born again baptized believer in Jesus Christ is to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. That's what you were saying about this morning. The power of his resurrection. Amen, sir. The power. Every one of us who call on the name of the Lord, we have power. Yes, sir. We have that same resurrection. Yes, I can speak to mountains. When I get the bad doctor report, yeah, I can say, yeah. get behind me, say, yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I don't have to take that laying down. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's not to dismiss the doctor's education. Well, all right. At all. No, it's not to insult the time that he spent learning. Uh, that's right, sir. I'm just telling him about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm telling him. Yeah. And then he can do with it <laughs> what he will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I ain't trying to dismiss nothing. My son's a doctor. I don't dismiss him all those years of his education. Amen. He tells me as much as he knows for my health's sake. <clears throat> Amen now. But that does not negate. Come on. He did it all. Yes, oh, oh. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Ain't got nothing to do with that. And so that's why the doctor asked you, are you afraid? Of what? Yes, sir. Of what? Amen. <laughs> what am I afraid of? Because he is with me. Yes, he is. This man who has spent a lifetime obtaining and using it wrongly, God now enables him, Come on, sir. put him 
in the ministry to help us to look beyond our ignorance of the scripture. Thank you, Lord. Paul is speaking to us today on this Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, he right. said, you need to know that Resurrection Sunday is more than just Jesus getting up from the dead. Oh, yes, sir. Sir. oh he did a whole heap more than that. Yes, if that's all he did, I thank God for it. But it's so much more. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we got to look beyond today. So at, the, at midnight, when it's no longer Resurrection Sunday, you can still walk in the power of the Resurrection. Uh, when it's no longer Resurrection Sunday. Huh? You see, we tend to look beyond the power of the Resurrection Sunday, and all we see is what? An empty grave. Huh? An empty grave. We treat Resurrection Sunday as just another holiday. Huh? It's a holiday for us. Huh? A Christian holiday. Where we all get excited about Jesus getting up from the dead over 2,000 years ago. Newsflash, he's still up. <laughs> so this morning for us, title, I'm going to talk about the power of the resurrection. Amen. And I hope somebody will embrace it Amen. because I'm talking to you Amen. about the power of the resurrection. Because the resurrection power does more than just get Jesus and you back to God. Amen. Does so much more. Because until I go back to glory, I'm here on this earth. Amen. And if I'm going to make it <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday again, I need me some resurrection power. I got to make it, huh, until such time as Jesus come back. I need something that's going to keep me until God says, well done, huh, thy good and faithful servant, huh. I've got a lifetime that I must live until God calls me home. You see, it's the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ Amen. that's at work right now. Right now, today. How do I know? Because we call ourselves children of God. Yes, sir. And it was the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that allows you and enables you to be a child of God. As many as received him to them, he gave power. Yes, sir. Power to become what? Sons or children of God. Yes, sir. Huh? The only reason that you and I can be counted for the seed of Abraham is because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the power of the resurrection that even gives you the faith to call on the name of Jesus in times of need. Huh? It's the power of the resurrection that has Satan under your feet. Satan ain't over my head. Right now. I walk on Satan. Amen. I tread on Satan. Because God put him under my feet the day Jesus got up from the dead. He did more than just get up from the dead. He gave me the power to bruise the head of the devil. Yes, sir. It's the power of the resurrection that gives you and I the discipline and the power to draw others into the kingdom of God. And that's what Peter said. Why do you look at me as though I have some power? It's him that got up from the dead who enables me to draw you and all men unto him. Oh, it's the resurrection power that's working. And I want you to know something. That resurrection power that got Jesus up 2,000 years ago, he left it here. And it's here now and it's working now. Just as it did then. Yes, sir. Amen. He left it here for every one of us. Yes. I know we enjoy talking about eternal life that we have obtained as a result of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. But why are you passing up on all the other benefits of the resurrection? Right. Huh? Why are you waiting on your eternal life? The devil is beating you down like a red-headed stepchild. Say so, Tom. Huh? Amen. Um, that's what Sophia told Celia in color purple. Girl. 
You better worry about heaven later. Go ahead on the bash and bash the head in now. You ain't going to make it there. See, we forget that God gave us a life to live now. That's all she was telling Celia. Celia, you have a life. God gave you life to live now. God wants to bless you with that resurrection power now. Oh, the eternal life is going to take care of itself. But there's more in the policy than just eternal life. And if you don't know what else is in the policy, my pastor said, if you don't know what's in there, then you don't have anything in there. Huh? That's why the devil abuses us, because we don't know what's in the policy. I have authority to rebuke the devil. I have the power to trade on him. I don't have to stand there and let the devil steal my joy. He didn't give it to me, and he surely can't take it away. I appreciate you that y'all get dressed up and excited on Resurrection Sunday, but you got to live the other 364 days. And I've given you something that will keep you day by day, day in, day out, and it's the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Amen. Come on, so Resurrection Sunday is more. I was reading an article yesterday. I like when people become so, so, so philosophical about it. <laughs> yesterday on the Internet, they had that the resurrection is, is, is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Well, that's that, by definition, is Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> So that says that, 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 that after March 20th or 21st, somewhere in that window, that's when we say that the spring, the vernal equinox, which is spring, that's when you have what? What's the vernal equinox? What is it? You, everybody here knows it. It's where you have equal amount of day and night. So you have 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of dark. That's the vernal equinox. Equinox equal? That's what it is. So somewhere after March 21st, we are going to have a full moon. And once that full moon rises, the very next Sunday is Easter or Resurrection Sunday. That's what man has reduced it down to. He's reduced it down to a science. Paul said he did it ignorantly. The resurrection reduced down to a day on the calendar. This great getting up morning of Jesus Christ with all in heaven and in earth has been reduced to a day on the and so we walk in Resurrection Sunday for a 24 hour period and we walk in defeat the other 364 days because we don't claim the power of the resurrection Paul wrote it there he said you need to know him and the power of his resurrection. That's why you can walk with your head upright in spite of the news. Because you know there's a God that's greater than the news that you may have received. That's what he's trying to say to us. So a believer in Jesus Christ, every day is a good day. Huh? Every day that God allows me to draw in some breath and my heart beat is a day to say, thank you, Lord, for this is the day that you have Now I'm not a fool. That doesn't mean everything is, that's happening in the course of my day is good. Yeah. But everything that happens in that day is blessed. Yeah. Amen. So I walk in God's blessing, yeah. and I just thank Him. Yeah. And even when my day pushes back on me, yeah. huh? The Bible says when it pushes back, cast all your cares upon Him. Yeah. Yeah. Cast 
Lord took care of him. So you don't have to be worried about nothing. Soon as Satan pushes, you just take it and point it to Jesus. And you go on about your business. You just go on about your business. Because God says, I got this. I got this. I told you to cast everything on me because I care for you. So I don't have to be worried about absolutely, positively nothing. So if you worry, you worry for nothing. You need to learn how to just cast it on Jesus. And then you go about your business. That's right. Do what God is allowing you to do in the course of that day, whatever it is. Amen. But you don't have to sit there with your brow wrinkled and people trying to invent cream to get the wrinkles out. <laughs> the crows eat out your face. Get you some Jesus. Get you some Jesus. Huh? Uh, every now and then people lie to me. And it's okay. So I was at the hospital. Yes, I was up in Fairfax at the hospital yesterday. And we talked to some of my birthdays came up. I said, well, God is good. He, on my next birthday, I'll be 70 years old. And then somebody said, well, you sure don't look it. Well, I'll tell you, you don't have to lie. But I look in the mirror. Whoa, hold up there, bad man. I remember when I, my, as I got a little older, I was getting close to 50, and uh, and I realized I needed bifocals. Amen. And I went down, I was at Fort Seal, and I went down to get me some bifocals. And my wife was with me just to remind me she didn't want me looking old. She said, Clyde, don't you get them bifocals that you can see in the black. <laughs> you get to some of them for the rest. So at least in the Go to the eye doctor. I went there the other week. Got a new pair of glasses. How y'all like that? And they had a special two pair, fifty nine dollars. And I walked in the lab. I said, one thing I know, that special don't apply to me. Because as soon as you walk in there talking about bifocal, aggressive, and all that, so let's take that special to the trash can. They said, sir, that ain't for you. Yours gonna cost about nine hundred dollars. Can I get a witness? Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know that special don't never apply to you. Huh? If you're getting $59 glasses, you truthfully don't need no glasses. The doctor says, sir, take off your glasses and read the chart. Let the chart go. Brother, you don't see nothing. Don't y'all remember in school, they had them E's. I called you go to tell them which way it go, go this way up. Man, they take the thing off, you be like, what are you? What are you doing? Well, sir, just read what you can see. A O. A. Well, ain't nothing up there but an E. God is good. God will keep you in spite of us. See, God, through the Holy Spirit, is allowing us to look beyond the empty grave. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. Well, all that God gave me is not inside of an empty cave. Come on now. God has given me the power, because he says so, to live now abundantly. Yes. Did I make that? Because the Bible says he came to, to give us this life, and, and not only gave me life, but he gave me what? So see, God intends for me to live well. Huh? God wants me to live life to his fullest. He gave it to us. Yes. And he says, I want you to enjoy the life that I have given you. Yes. And what's going to enable you to live that life is the resurrection power yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. He says, so you walk in. Yes. We call it victory. Yes. He yes. said, you walk in. You walk in what I have secured for you. Yes. Amen. Yes. That resurrection power that gives you the authority over the wiles of the devil. Yes, sir. Huh? That resurrection power or another word for the resurrection power is what? Dunamis. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. Exclusive, explosive. Huh? Them, they, I was looking at it yesterday, stomp the yard. Huh? Explosive, explosive. They said, dynamite. TNT, the most powerful explosive known to man. It's called resurrection power. Huh? Jesus exercised that dunamis power when he got up from the grave. And he left it here for us. But he wants us to learn like Paul. To know him and the power of the resurrection. So I want you to leave here today rejecting this nonsense of a holiday. Come on now. Huh? I asked a question this morning. The question was simply as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, we always want to say we are walking according to scripture. Okay, well, I got a question for it. The Bible says that we should remember the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Amen. And keep it holy. Well, as we count days of the week, mm -hmm. which day, in terms of number, is the Sabbath day? Can anybody agree that the Sabbath day is the first day? No, everybody agrees that as we count days, the Sabbath day is the seventh day. Riddle me this. If, in fact, Saturday would be the Sabbath day, then what are you doing here today? Why are you here? Hmm? Why are you here? What brought you here? Today, was it a, a red dot on the calendar? Well, the Bible teaches plainly that Jesus Christ got up from the dead on what day of the week? Did Jesus get up from the dead on the seventh day? He got up from the dead on the first day. The first day. And so the early apostles decided that in honor of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will assemble on the first day of the week to show forth his resurrection until he comes back. So, that being the case by tradition, how many days do we, how many resurrection Sundays do we have? Somebody can say, 52. 52. We assemble on the first day of the week to show forth the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Every Sunday that we assemble is to celebrate resurrection Sunday. Not reduced down to the theatrics of a man and science. Yes. The first full moon huh? after March 21st, the vernal equinox. <laughs> we who believe in Jesus Christ assemble on the first day of the week to show forth the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. Yes. So we don't dishonor his commandment. Oh, God is good to us. Yes. Oh, I'm talking about, see, that's walking in the power of the resurrection. So 365 days from now, it ain't a holiday for me. It's just one more time to show forth his resurrection. Just one more time to show that I am walking in the knowledge of his resurrection. Because knowledge chases away ignorance. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's what it does. It opens our understanding so that we can live for Christ fully and not wait for a holiday to pop up on the calendar. That same power, that resurrection power that got Jesus up from the dead is the same resurrection power that raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. It's the same power that healed the leper. I'm talking about the resurrection power that will never lose it's power. Yeah. Huh? I'm talking about, so what I'm trying to say is that, where is that power found? Where is the resurrection power found? He gave you a hint. No. K-N-O-W. No. Which then ties into what? The word of God. That's what Paul says. I did it in 
Jesus said, I error because I don't know the scriptures. He said, when you don't know the scriptures, then you do not walk in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why he said, know him. And know, know, K-N-O-W, the power of his resurrection. God is trying to tell us something today. And he told Martha, who thought she understood the resurrection. You know this was the sister of Lazarus who had died. And she told him, Jesus, you know, if you had gotten here in time, Lazarus would still be alive. <clears throat> Jesus said, that's okay. That's okay. That's not a problem. I'm here now. Oh. Huh? Yes, sir. I am here now. And she told him, listen to her words. She said, I know that my brother will get up on that resurrection day at the last. See, just like all of us believe, we'll all get up from the dead at the light. That's what she said. She said, I know as a believer in God, I will get up at the last along with my brother. Jesus said, well, let me make it plainly to you. What did he say? Make it plain. I am the resurrection. When you know me, don't you realize you are staring in the face of the resurrection? Don't you know that the resurrection is talking to you? I am the resurrection. I am the light. If you find yourself being beat down, 
You find yourself being discouraged. You find yourself being defeated. I tell you there is a power. There is a resurrection power that keeps on working in your life. And that resurrection power is not a thing. It's not some force of nature. It's Jesus Christ himself. Paul said, know him. You need to know him today. You need to know Jesus in the power of his resurrection. When you know Jesus, you have hope. You can keep your head up high. Because your hope is built on nothing and less than that his blood. Uh, come on now. And his right. When you know Jesus, there's power in his love. Because God so loved us that he gave us his only begotten son. I'm, I'm telling you, there's joy of the resurrection. This joy I had. The world didn't give it. Of the resurrection, a peace that surpasses oh. all understanding. There's freedom in the power yes. of the resurrection yes. because whom the Son sets free, yes. free. Yes. 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 so today you may not know him in the power of his resurrection. God is bringing you into a knowledge of the living King who is residing right now at the right hand of the Father. And the knowledge of the power, listen to me now, to know that he has power is insufficient. You must possess the power. It's only meaningful if you possess the power. Not just be able to get the answer on jeopardy. Huh? Get the right answer. You need to be able to possess this power because this resurrection power is going to see you through. This resurrection power is going to get you over the hump. This resurrection power is going to save your life. This resurrection power that God has given to us and he left here for us. So what is the resurrection power? It must be the Holy Ghost. It must be the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> huh? Yes. What's that song you sing, AJ? I can't remember right now. Save my soul. If I don't have a brother out, my hair's great. But sing it then.
and power, the person of the Holy Ghost. And God has left him here with us to enable us to overcome, to be more than conquerors, huh? to withstand and to stand and have it done all. He said, we can stand because of the resurrection power. The dunamis, it must be the Holy Ghost. You see, Paul calls it the Holy Ghost. He calls it the power of the resurrection in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. What was he talking about? It must be the Holy Ghost. Because he gives us the power to be raised from the dead. See, it's not about a holiday. It ain't a holiday. It never was a holiday. It was always a person. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. And the Bible commends us to do what? No. Yeah. And he said, it don't stop that. And the power of the resurrection. Because what does the Holy Ghost do? 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says this. The Holy Ghost who regenerates us. Amen. Who borns us anew. Amen. So that we too can experience the resurrection. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And the Holy Ghost is going to keep me. Yes. He's going to empower me. Thank you. And he encourages me when life pushes back. The Bible says he even does what? Helps you with your affliction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to tell you about the resurrection. Amen. See, right now, we're going to celebrate this communion. But before, before I tell you what I'm going to get him a seat. Today we want to commemorate what Jesus Christ did for us. That's what this is all about. That's all it is. It's a way in which God has ordained. In Leviticus, he told us that it would be what? A memorial forever. Jesus said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we would do what? As all of them. And we were to do this. He said, until I come back. He said, for in so doing, you commemorate him. His death and the resurrection power. I want everyone to prepare their hearts now to receive and participate in the supper of remembrance. God, I have Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thankful, Lord God, for this day. Blessing you, Lord God, for this moment in time. I don't take time for granted. I don't count tomorrow, which may never be mine. So I just want to bless you for right now, Lord God, for this day. And to give you praise, honor, and glory in my life. I pray, Lord God, that you will search every heart in this room. And that you will forgive us, Lord. For every wayward thought. For every unkind deed. For every mean spoken word. And that you will cast it in the sea of forgetfulness remembering our sins no more. And that you will now enable us that we might go out and show forth your glory and your majesty as your ambassadors in Christ until you come back for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And for that tender mercy and sake, amen. amen. And on that night, he took the bread, he blessed.